the advanced models we needed right then so this is all about the finite discretization methods whether we are going with a volume approach or the elemental approach and at the same time the coordinates we are even dependent upon so this slide will clearly make you why you have done with the subject name numerical methods so here you can see finite volume and the finite elemental methods usually used for the regular measures and the finite difference is for the spatial derivatives and where in that one which are derived using the taylor's expansion and in that second order of pin and the central order schemes these schemes we are going to discuss it anyway no problem so and there are other derivatives that is temporal derivatives spatial derivatives and temporal derivatives this we are going to discuss in our syllabus individually and each and every point to point we are going to discuss just for an example of the finite difference here you can see so it is u i plus 1 comma j minus u i comma j so that means i is behind and i plus 1 is moving forward from the behind point to the forward point how we are moving so that it is that is the difference method we are going to adopt like this there are forward method and backward methods here right so here in this one you can clearly see so there are four dots involved so this is the i actually here you can see at the bottom of it my mouse cursor you can see so that when we are moving a point ahead of this one that is i plus one when you are moving when you are moving with a point behind that one that is i minus one so exactly if you are standing on that line that is exactly at an i but if you are moving on the vertically vertically positive side that is j plus one if you are moving vertically downward that is j minus one this is what the exact it does i so always it may not be the i it can be any name but we are talking about how do we approach to the problem if you are saying forwarding approach that is i plus one we are going with it. if you are going a backward approach that is i to i minus one we are going with it. so that is what it was giving in this equation so is this is a forward approach or a backward approach u i plus one comma j minus u i comma j i plus one is a forward or backward it was a forward point or a backward point forward forward point very very so this we are going with in a forward approach this we are going with in a forward approach but when you are moving to the forward point again it will ask you whether you are on the same straight line why don't you say that your point is somewhere here how can you be sure that your point is matching onto the next point only maybe your point might be here right maybe your point is might be here also maybe your point somewhere here also possible right so that says that says the red dots i am showing you here in this one that talks about exactly the error involved in that one the error involved in that one that is do square u by do x square comma i comma j if there is an error involved at that point and when i move to the next point the average values i am going to take it on the delta x by 2 that is x distance this is the x direction when i am moving on this one please consider that error please consider that error and correct it forward like this it is going to tell you right so we are going to discuss each and every point don't worry but just for what exactly the flavor of this subject i just want to give you so that is how it is going to numerical solutions in the finite differences for mac number point 1 it is giving correct result for mac number point 2 it is giving a wrong error it is error is being increased so that means stability of the equation is not valid when your mac number is rising up filled complete domain is being filled in both the cases mesh is being covered with it but in the above case it has completely with a no, highly stretched and the structured mesh and in the second case it has completely unstructured so that is a triangular element somewhere it is hexagonal element or being mapped into this one so that makes a structured and the unstructured see for example for example question to everyone if we have a straight load a straight road laid up in your path of movement straight road or curved road there is a road developed already there is a road possible So you will be moving. You will be reaching to your point B from A point to B point. If there is a proper road, you will be moving very smoothly and easily and quickly. And when your road is not laid properly, when your road is not laid properly, and you are not sure about the direction you are moving into, you are sure only about the direction you are moving into. Will you be reaching within a short time? Or maybe no, or maybe it's only purely guess value, right? so when when my road is not laid up when when i have when i don't have a proper direction to move so many obstacles are there when the road is not there means so many obstacles are there so i have to every time overcome the obstacles so like a little bit zigzag manner i have to move around so that will be time consuming at the same time to reach the point d so that i only mentioned that i have to move in this direction from point 1 to point 2 but point 1 to point 2 so that may be going like this and coming down and again moving so there may be a zigzag manner or completely it may go down and again come up like this so that is the case with an unstructured mesh so when you go with an unstructured mesh the result is going to be very quick 
at the same time the accuracy also can be improved in the structured meshes and unstructured mesh it is only based upon the complexity of the problem where we say okay this complex problem need a more adoption of the mesh so can it be concluded with the unstructured in that case we will be going to the adoption of the unstructured meshes unstructured meshes are easy to develop unstructured meshes are easy to develop but the structured meshes are time consuming yes fine somebody has given that answer yes it is even dependent upon the vehicle we are using or the geometry we are using depending on the vehicle and the geometry and on the problem and the physics so many factors whether we are going for the structured or unstructured meshes right so that the grid generation and the mesh adoption is also very important see generally all the time will our geometry be like straight rectangular coordinates here on the see here on the screen you can see the physical domain and the computational domain how the computer understands that or even you can see the physical domain is actually like this the physical domain is actually like this this is our physical domain so what exactly the computer is going to take this is the computer going to take like physical domain like this so we know it will immediately transform to its requirement it, it has to transform that physical domain is being transformed into the computational domain you just see here and let us name it so for example this is one okay one i didn't get the correct point let me erase it this is one two three four five one two two Four and five. Okay. Okay. No issue. So, what exactly the transformation is in the real phenomena? In the real phenomena, this is what my domain looks like. This is what my domain looks like. So, actually, this domain I can't define with any shape like a rectangle or quad or a hexagon. right so what computer is doing is this shape completely so this shape completely it is changing as per its requirement it is changing this complete shape as per this requirement like this so as per its requirement the shape is actually like this and this shape has been transformed like this one so computer is doing its job simple just like in your just like in your computer language the binary coding and again binary will be decoded or else your voice when you are communicating with others it will be decoded again it will be encoded right so whatever we are speaking it is decoded again it is encoded and finally it reaches whatever my voice is you are able to listen on to the other side similarly that encoding and decoding in mathematics we call it as transformations right so whatever my whatever my face here in this one it is having so it is transformed into the straight uh, some standard shape the computer is changing it into the standard shape and it will analyze the solution in that standard shape and finally when it is giving my results back it will again put my solution in that shape one it will put my solution into the shape one so what exactly the transformation functions is see here on the denominator here on the bottom side you can see in the x direction do f by do x i'm partially taking it on do f by do x here i have involved with it one more time that is epsilon or the eta so these terms are transforming in the direction of the x and in the eta direction right so epsilon and the eta direction it is being changed and in that direction how much of the shape distortion is being adopted by this equation and that will show that equation on to the computer side this is a normal this is like a, a, regular, a regular shape you have it there analyze on the regular shape and give that solution to the again repost it your solution on to the transform domain or into the physical domain so this is how the computer is going to do us do for us okay the solutions are going to be transformed right transforming from one shape to the other shape right for example a liquid for a liquid to move a thin line of thin line of your gap is good enough for it to flow but if you have again one of the another container at the bottom of it again it occupies the new shape of the container even that the equation is also doing the same so when you are putting into the computer it has to go into that narrow binary a narrow code only so the narrow code is again computational domain and again finally it has to come to its ball shape where originally it was in so that ball shape is finally occupied here 
So this is what the company CFD is also transforming its solutions and adopting the solutions and doing it, right? So that is how exactly happening in this one. Now, next it comes to the number of processors. So this is every example. I'm the one. I'm the one. I don't know about the scaling factor at all. But I was in a I was in a assumption that when I don't take the scale, when I don't take the original size of the model, the problem cannot be solved, or I don't get the results accurate. So that was my my, my assumption was right. With that assumptions, if I started my analysis. Right. So that is my going surface area completely water and analyzing using CFD. My requirement would be again going to that level only. Why requirement would be going at that level only? That is what my first graph is stating. If I have 2,000 processors also, it will be running 10 iterations per day. It will be running 10 iterations only per day. Or my solution may take one month to give me complete solution. But on the other side, you on the other side, you people are there. What you have done is you have scaled down that model and you have analyzed it using using only 55 processors or using only 128 processors. You have done it and you have brought your solution within a week, somewhere around six days. Within six days, you have brought your solution and you have mentioned, sir, whatever you brought it in a one month solution with an original model dimensions and whatever I brought it in a six day solution, we just multiply with the scaling factor, our results are going to be saved. The computational time is being saved and at the same time, by reducing the scaling size. I can go with less number of processors or less number of time consumption and at the same accuracy only the factors when I multiply with the scaling then I'm going to result in the same way. So that means my requirements will be can be reduced. My requirements can be reduced within a less requirements I'm able to produce that 745 results, 747 aircraft results right whereas Whereas on the other side, which, which I was not aware, I was buying a lot of processors. I was buying for 2000 processors and I started analyzing. Whereas you have done with only 64 processors. You have saved your time, you have saved your money, and with the less time, you have got the accurate and the same results. So that is what the high performance computing requirement is 